So then yeah. over the years, I'd watch myself, and I was like, oh, my God, I move my hands a little. Oh, my God, why am I so awkward? I know, you know, you kinda, like, I know. fix it a little. I know. I still do this a lot. Me, too. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like in a gang or something. <laughs> I'm like, you got to go to What's the crowd. What's up? I your security. Mm -hmm. We so secure. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Gal. Today, I have with me Kelly Anderson. It's like a newscaster name. Thank you. It's like a really good name. Thank you. I mean, I like it. I'm we a should fan. be famous. We're gonna make you famous. <laughs> this is how we're gonna do it. Thank you. What do you say you do here at Microsoft? So I am the product marketing manager, well, one of two, for Azure Security. You're, there's two of you? There are two of us that are running the machine that is Azure Security. I mean, Azure Security is a huge word. What is it? Yeah. Like, it is huge. <laughs> yeah. You can't just say Azure Security and that it's just you two <laughs> helping market that. What is it? So, the way that we tell the story is we break it down into three pillars. The first one is um, when we talk about the shared responsibility model and cloud with customers, there are things that the cloud provider will do for customers, and there are things that the customer will continue to have to do in okay. the cloud. Okay. Just like they did on premises, uh -huh. they're going to have to do that uh -huh. in the cloud. So the first thing is we talk about the secure foundation that Microsoft provides. So when you decide to be an Azure customer, these are things that Microsoft will do to make sure that Azure is secure. Mm -hmm. The second thing that we talk about are the built-in security services that we have native to the Azure platform. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the Azure Marketplace, you can see a bunch of different security services that you can use to further secure your data and your business assets. And then the third thing that we offer is this unique intelligence. Uh, we recently announced it at RSA, uh, which is a big security conference in April. Uh -huh. In the Microsoft Intelligence Security Graph, we consolidate intelligence from all of our products as well as from our broader ecosystem. Uh -huh. So customers can see threats as they're evolving in real time. What? Yeah, we think it's pretty cool. Uh, and keep pace with those threats. I'm sorry, so how does that, is that artificial intelligence? Like it's foretelling the future? So it's not foretelling the future. Uh -huh. We're using machine learning uh -huh. to pull signals from all of our products. So we work across Azure, Office, Skype, Bing, okay. um, as well as our larger partner ecosystem. Uh -huh. And then we consolidate all that activity okay. into that API. Okay. So customers can go in and see threats and then take the necessary action that they need to to safeguard from that attack. Man, I'm already sold. Azure security <laughs> for the win. Yeah. So this is just all comes with Azure, right? You just log in, you add these features if you want it, if you don't want it. Yeah. And that's it. So the secure foundation, again, if you sign up to be an Azure customer, you, you will already receive have that. that. Yeah. And then the built-in security services, you will have to elect to use mm -hmm. those. And you can use Microsoft first-party services services, or if you really love a partner solution that mm -hmm. you're using on-premises, you can bring that to Azure as well. Nice. So we, we like to keep things flexible. Yeah, yeah. You, whatever you, your partners, ours, we don't care. Let's build it on Azure. That's all we care about, right? Because exactly. you're going to get that security. You're going to get all those awesome people support. Um, and what's your favorite Azure security feature that you can just add on? So I love, and again, I'm biased towards this, um, I love our security management service. Okay. It's Azure Security Center uh -huh. because for the first time, we're giving customers a centralized location to view their security state across all their different environments. So whether they have environments running in the cloud, um, on-premises, or a hybrid environment. And so that's really important in the security space mm -hmm. because our customers need to know, hey, what's important? Like, what is an issue that I need to address mm -hmm. first? Yeah. Um, as well as what is a issue that is worth my time and my mm -hmm. attention? And then what is something that's just noise? Nice. And so that's just one of the things that Security Center can help our customers Is it like out. a nice little Power BI dashboard looking thing? So it is not a Power BI dashboard. We have our own overview dashboard, okay. but yes, it is um, color coordinated. So red is you know the most pressing issue that you need to address, nice. and blue is still pressing, but you've got some time. Yeah, Please yeah. address the red issues first. Yeah, yeah. Cool type of thing. Nice. So, yeah. yeah, we should put a little screenshot of that right now. <laughs> oh look, it's so pretty. I'm sure we won't find one. I mean, you'll send us one. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure you. I, will. I was like, I would love to. You have to like blur out all the important information. It's just <laughs> yeah. this blurry image. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. So how long have you been doing this role? So I've been in this role for about eight months. Wow. So. Fresh. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Learning a ton, 
really happy to be in this space. Yeah, security is uh, hot, hot yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, it is very important. Yeah. So naturally, it's going to be a hot space. So where were you before this? So before this, I was still working um, on the security management team, but yeah. I was on the management side. Okay. And so I was working on product marketing for our business continuity solutions, mm -hmm. so Azure Backup and Azure Disaster Recovery. Oh. And so what's great about those services is that in the event that a disaster would happen, either a natural disaster or let's say there was some type of uh, mechanical error, mm -hmm. those two services would ensure that your data and your applications would continue to run wow. in the event of a disaster. So again, another important service. Is that just like different, it hits up different data centers? What are, Correct. Is so just? ideally, if the customer was running their data or their applications on premises, mm -hmm. they would fill it over to a data center in Azure oh, okay. and keep it running in Azure. Okay. Cool. Nice. Yeah. So how long were you on that team for? So I was on that team for about a year. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Same same org you're in. You yes. just kind of you know it's different teams a little yes. bit. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So you saw similar coworkers and all that goodness. So where were you? The same dream team. Same, same dream team. <laughs> yes. So where were you before uh, before that team? So before that, I was in the field and I was working as a technical account manager. Um, I was based in the East Coast. Okay. And I knew that I wanted to start in the field in a customer facing role where I could learn how our customers were using our technologies every day mm -hmm. before I moved into a more internal role where I still interact with our customers yeah. and I still um, get to get their feedback on our products, mm -hmm. but it's not at the same frequency as I did where every day I was either calling them or going on site um, and meeting with them and learning how they were using our products and what they wanted out of our products. So uh, for folks that are watching the field is pretty much anyone not at Corp, you know, you're out. Mm -hmm in the US and the global, you're, you're based elsewhere. And then internally, it's, it's what's happening at Corp. Um, but so the field, were you working from home or did you have an office? So we had an office, yeah. Okay. So I was based in Charlotte, North Carolina, and they had a campus there. Mm -hmm. So I would go in every day. Um, well, I shouldn't say every day, but for most, most days, days. I was going to say, sometimes I'm working yeah. from home on Fridays. Yeah, yeah. Pretty nice. Nice. And then you'd um, go to your customers' offices and meet with them and have meetings there. Yeah. You were exactly. wheeling and dealing at such a young age. <laughs> how did it feel go, being like 22 years old and going and meeting with customers and, hey, how are you doing? I'm do yeah, what yeah. Is so, like? um, again, I th it was a great experience because even though maybe I, I, well, maybe, I didn't have the same experience as my colleagues who had been doing that for a while, mm -hmm. um, I still knew more at that time about the products because it was my job mm -hmm. to know more about our products and educate our customers That's true. than my there customers did. Yeah. And so I would use that to build confidence mm -hmm. for myself going into those situations is, I don't have the years of industry experience yet, mm -hmm. but what do I currently have that I can offer? Mm -hmm. And it was, I have knowledge in this particular product or this particular challenge that they're trying to solve. Yeah. And that would help to build those relationships and make them really successful. Nice. That sounds like a fun job. I'm it was, down. Yeah, it was it was great. Yeah. It was great. I highly yeah, I highly recommend it. Go out in the field, <laughs> get one of those roles. That's cool. So yeah. so before that, uh, you were at university. Yes. So let's talk about what university you went to, what was the degree you got, and how you landed this job in the field at Microsoft. Yes. So I went to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Go Tar Heels. Yes. Woo. <laughs> and I was a business communications major. Okay. And the way that I got this job was probably like every other senior in college, I was going to career fairs that were offered at my university mm -hmm. and I was applying to jobs online and I was just very open. Yeah. Um, and so I received an email from Microsoft saying that they were coming to campus and that they wanted to interview me. And uh, you know, I immediately replied, yes. And then I had my first interview with them, and it was a phone interview. And I laughed because <laughs> 30 minutes before I was supposed to have this phone interview, uh -huh. um, I locked my phone and my keys in my car. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was freaking out, but thankfully, it all worked, and I was able to get my keys and my phone right before the interview started. And you know, this was it was good using that yoga that I do yes. to practice breathing. Zen it out. Zen it, it out. If it was meant to be, it was meant to be. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I can't let them, I can't show that during my interview that this just happened. Yep. Um, and so I did have a successful phone interview uh -huh. because then I was um, just sent to my final interview and I interviewed for a day. Um, and then Was that, that in North Carolina or did you come out that here? That was in North Carolina. Okay. 
Um, and then I got my job offer the following Monday. Wow. And I accepted. Look at you. And I was super excited. Were to you talking to other companies or was mm -hmm. this a number one choice? So I was, I was talking to other companies and I was interviewing, but um, in terms of the scale of opportunities that would be available, right, Microsoft just being um, such a large company mm -hmm. and it's a global company and there's so many different roles yeah. that you can hold within Microsoft. Mm -hmm. I just felt like it would be the best for me mm -hmm. for what I saw myself wanting to do. So you said they just, Microsoft reached out to you and, and uh, you know, told you about this role and you applied and you did the interview. Yes. How did they reach, did you just have a cool resume or work experience? <laughs> Why did they pick you? Um, that's a great question. Yeah. I, I still don't know. <laughs> uh, if the recruiter's watching, if you, if you want to let me know. Well, um, what you saw in her, I mean. <laughs> So what happened was um, <coughs> my university had a portal where you could upload your resume mm -hmm. and send it to all recruiters that were coming on campus. Okay. So I'm assuming they got it that way because mm -hmm. that I did not reach out to Microsoft mm -hmm. or a Microsoft recruiter on LinkedIn. And your resume was just that delicious. They were just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's what I'm telling that, you. I was looking for this, Kelly. <laughs> Kelly, all day long. I'm glad I found her. All right. <laughs> so, I mean... Internships, uh, the university recruiting, those are just key things you just need to do. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, is, yeah. and I think, and it can be hard oh, yeah. um, going through it because sometimes you will put yourself out there and you're going to get rejected. Oh, you're going to get rejected a lot. Right? And it hurts. it hurts. And I think just a good thing to keep in mind, and I had to tell this to myself while I was going mm -hmm. through it, and even now while I'm applying myself and going for things, is that if you don't get it, it's for a reason, mm -hmm. and if you don't get it, you know, don't take it personal. Yeah. It's not that you're it's not talented, personal, it's not yeah. that you're not capable, it's just they're looking for a different fit mm -hmm. in that role, mm -hmm. and someone will see the skills that you possess and say, that's a good fit for the role that yeah. I'm looking for. I had a good uh, moment with my, my, one of my first managers, when I was an uh, intern in college, and he was like, be picky with the first job you accept. He's like, don't settle because it's hard to keep climbing. He's like, be really, really picky when you get out of college. And I feel like that stuck, stuck with me really well. And it should stick with people because, yeah, just take your time. Don't force it. Don't feel like it's not happening. It'll never happen. Take your time and go after that good job that you know it's going to be a good foundation you can excel in later. So I think that's really key. So that's cool. You're just lucky. Get out of here. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm like, all right, this interview's this over. This interview's over. I'm this going. girl's luck. She's got no good advice. No. <laughs> no, you're awesome. And so you got a, you have a business communication degree and then you accepted this technical role. Yeah. How did you catch up? How did you learn it? How did you yeah. Tell us that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was one of the <laughs> appeals of starting as a technical account manager was I knew that I would have or I had some understanding of the business um, and that would still be something that I'd have to learn and grow mm -hmm. in. Um, but I wanted to, a role where I'd be forced um, to learn mm -hmm. our, the technical capabilities about our product. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I love learning. I consider it to be one of my strengths. Um, and so I knew that, again, if I just put myself in a space yep. where I would be measured um, or that would determine my success, mm -hmm. like how well I did in that role, um, that I would learn it and I could do it and then it would give me the confidence in the future if I applied for more technical roles or if I had to become very specific mm -hmm. in a certain technology that I could use that story and say, hey, I started off as a business communications major, I did not know anything about technology mm -hmm. and I was able to do this and then use that as leverage to show what I could do in the future. Nice. So this technical account role where you uh, try to sell or teach about Azure? Was that the? Yeah. Okay. So it was interesting because when so I you joined, got lucky. You, you started yeah. off on Azure, like <laughs> the future. Yeah. yeah. I have been team Azure uh, nice. my entire time here good, so good. far. Um, but when I joined in 2015, um, Satya had just become president, or okay. CEO, uh -huh. president. President. <laughs> president of the world. I was going to say president of my heart. <laughs> Um, he had just become CEO in 2014, and so that's when the big push okay. for Azure started. Yeah. And so in 2015, um, that was my goal, was to help our customers as they transition from on-premises to the cloud, and yeah. that included Azure and Office 365. So nobody and really knew what it was then. You were yeah. learning when everyone else was learning. Yeah. So Yeah, and what was also interesting, too, was it was kind of like a bad word. You know, you would say something, something Azure, and customers say, oh, no. You no, know, I'm I, just scared. I don't want to move over you know, to the cloud. Right, like it's not but you know what? The cloud. Life's short. <laughs> Move over to the cloud. We were going to make shirts about that. We yeah. like that slogan. I should have brought that to the interview. Yeah. Life's like too short. A, Move to the cloud. <laughs> or like on a coffee mug yeah. or something. I was just selling it. I was like, I love that everything's on the cloud because I can yeah. flatten my PC and just install everything I need in like 10 minutes. Yeah. 
It's my very, Adobe Creative Cloud, my Outlook, my everything is just like boop, 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 boop. Yeah, it's very efficient. I love the cloud. Saves you time. Move a lot to of the benefits. cloud, man. <laughs> <laughs> so that worked out well. You were learning, and how did you teach yourself? Were you just like reading documentation, videos, anything you get your hands on? So a mixture of that. There was um, again, we have great resources. Our documentation, we have videos. There was a series of trainings mm -hmm. that we would have to complete quarterly, oh, just cool. by being in the field. Nice. Um, and then the other thing that I did was I would force myself to write mm -hmm. about the product, nice. and that. That it was a is very key. great transition moving into product marketing oh, yeah. because we will have to write demos, mm -hmm. we will have to write decks, we will have to write websites. And so again, it was if I can write about it and I can talk about it to the customer and the customer understands it, then I understand it and I know I've done my job because the customer can understand it. That's perfect. That's totally, that's how I learn too. When I write it out and yep. I teach someone, yep. that's when you learn it the most. Definitely. So let's go back. Let's go back to Baby Kelly. What was Baby <laughs> Kelly like? Did you know you were going to get into the tech field? Was that even an interest for you? Like what was your first introduction to tech? Give me that whole backstory. My first introduction was my mom actually because my mom, uh, she is a software engineer. And so I grew up watching her uh, have a very successful career wow. in technology. I mean, and she, she moved between being on the tech side and being on the business side. Um, but I watched her being able you know, to grow in her career mm -hmm. and also grow in being a mother and being a wife and being a friend and you know, all the different titles that women hold. Wow. And it was really inspiring. Um, and so the reason why, like as I got in high school and I got into college and I was thinking about potential places to work, um, and obviously I was asking my mom why she liked the tech industry mm -hmm. and why she had stayed for so long. And she just said that she loved the pace of innovation. Mm -hmm. She never got bored. Mm -hmm. There are always things to do. And I really identified with that mm -hmm. because I could have done. I, I could see myself getting bored mm -hmm. pretty easily, yeah. and so I wanted to be in a space where I would be constantly challenged, where I'd have the opportunity where I might not know something when I start, mm -hmm. but as I work in the role, I would gain the um, the skills and the aptitude and the knowledge that I would need to be successful in that space. Mm -hmm. Love it. You yeah. just sold it. <laughs> Thank I mean, you. Azure Security is the bomb now. You've sold it for me. So. <laughs> well, cool. I'm glad I know we have one customer. Yeah, you got one dedicated <laughs> customer. So let's say you have, uh, so you're, you give talks often, right? So we give, um, so we'll do demos. Demos, Video okay. Demos, yeah. so on when's Channel your, 9. On Channel 9. On yeah, studio. I've seen you on Azure Fridays. So, <laughs> so when's your next talk going to be? Uh, so I just had one um, at RSA, mm -hmm. which was the industry-wide security conference. And um, I do not know yet. I know we have Ignite in September, which mm -hmm. is one of our largest customer-facing conferences that is Microsoft-sponsored. Yep. So I do not know if I will you be You might make an appearance. Um, I, would, I would love to present. I'm going to give you a plane ticket. Don't worry. <laughs> and you guys should go register, too. So sign up. Save for the summer. Save your yeah. money and then go to Ignite because that's in September. So it's in September, exactly. You have plenty of time. You'll be sad summer's over, but yeah. then you have something to look but forward then you have to. Look, exactly. You have Ignite. One of Kelly's talks, which I'm sure she'll be there. I'll sign you up. I'll definitely be there for booth duty. There you go. So go talk to her at the Azure fails, Security booth. She'll I was be there. Say, I would love to talk to you at the booth. <laughs> so. That's her plug-in for the show. That was her little like, hey, come check this out. Okay, cool. Otherwise, you can go. I'm sure you'll be on an episode of Azure Friday soon enough, a new one with your new role. Um, something. Something will something. come up. I was going to say, things, things in Azure, things in security are changing so quickly. So yeah. something will come up. You're in a good up. spot. I was in a good, yeah. I was like, I think I'll stay here. You, is your team growing? Is there open head yes. count? Yes, I was like, we're hiring. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> shameless that's plug. That's a shameless plug. Um, yeah, we're growing. Um, so, and again, that's it's a great space to be um, in an area of the business. That's so I fast. know you have the Azure security story. Can you give us that pitch in one minute? One minute. Like, let, like I'm going to put a timer on. Okay. <laughs> so, like, let's say I'm a customer and I'm like, yeah, I want to stay on premise. I don't want to move to the cloud. Oh, yeah. yeah. What would you say? So, I would talk about the challenges <laughs> that we see our customers facing on premises, which is um, an increased amount of resources that they have to expend to secure their infrastructure. And we know that they don't always see a clear return of investment on um, the resources that they have. Uh, put forth towards securing their infrastructure. I would also talk about how it's really hard to recruit and maintain security experts. Mm -hmm. And That's one true. of the benefits that you get with being an Azure customer is mm -hmm. that you have over 3,500 cybersecurity experts that work on your behalf to act as human intelligence, to detect threats, 
that are targeting the Azure platform. I don't even think you need the full minute. <laughs> I'm already sold, but go on. Um, and then another one that we see is customers, we know they're using a variety of tools. Mm -hmm. um, some environments can have as many as five to six different tools for security. Um, and then they're giving all of, um, a bunch of different types of alerts and feedback. And so they need a way to be able to centralize their tools um, and understand what is noise mm -hmm. and what is actually worth my attention. Where your dashboard comes into play. And right? this is where that Security Center dashboard there comes into place. This is perfect. <laughs> Why would you not move over to Azure Security or move over to Azure and then plug, use those little additions? This is done. You got an easy job. <laughs> no, it's cool. So now it's time for our lightning round. We're going to get to know Kelly a little bit better. Okay. So I had the questions in my head, so it's gonna, I'm gonna, I might stall a little because uh, I don't <laughs> have them written down anywhere. It's All okay. right. My number one question, what do you spend money on that makes your life easier? So I'm sorry, Microsoft, but I have an Amazon Prime account. Oh. <laughs> And I that use is it. an essential in life. Food, <laughs> water, Amazon Prime. I know, and again, I'm like, I know, I'm supporting the competition. Yeah. Um, but I do get a lot of good insight uh, from using my from using Amazon Prime. So. Insight? Insight, just in terms of you know thinking about what's Ooh, a great customer experience, there right? You go. And thinking about how do we bring that to app. But again, Ooh, different markets, right? Totally Consumer, different market. cloud. I'm buying toilet paper <laughs> off Amazon <laughs> right, Prime. Right. Versus uh, how do I know my virtual machines will be secure? So. There you go. Totally different. Um, okay. What is uh, uh, the most useless ga gadget you've purchased? Ooh. Something with like uh, buyer's remorse. Oh, buyer's remorse. Yeah. So that's hard because I try to be very intentional mm -hmm. with my money. We were just talking um. about this. <laughs> we're like, we're millennials and everyone's like, go spend your money, you're young, be free. Yeah. And we're like, we want to retire and <laughs> buy a home one day with a garden. That yeah. was our argument. Yeah. We're like, we we're trying to be fiscally smart sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I would probably <laughs> say, um, Back in the day, like this was like when I was a kid, uh -huh. there would be these um, water bottles that also served as squirt guns and fans. Okay. Do you remember yeah. these? Um, this, like this was like this was a wave, <laughs> um, and there were and I was and I great marketing, but I fell into it and uh -huh. I bought one. And looking back, I'm like, you could have just used a piece of paper. You, you haven't you could have just poured you water. You haven't bought anything since then. <laughs> I was going to say, like, it's, no. Do you still have um, a TV that has, like, a big back? It's like a big square DVD TV? DVD player, <laughs> VHS floppy player, disc. floppy disk. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, You're that smart. Was, that was yeah. the first thing that came to mind. That was it. Interesting. <laughs> I'm going to buy you some. I'm going to buy some Amazon Prime and, and send it to your house. You need some type of tech. Go so just buy me, like, a, a basketball hoop and yeah. like become a basketball player There now. you go. She's a, she, she'll do it. You run triathlons, right? Yes, yes, I do. When's your next one? My race is actually, my first one is this Saturday. Are you serious? Yeah. So how's training? Like, what do you have to do? So training um, during, off, like, race season, uh -huh. which is now, I usually have um, a workout six days a week. Some days I have two workouts a day. Wow. Um, but again, I love it. Um, I'm a How many hours a day? One person. hour? Um, anywhere from one hour to two hours. Wow. And it varies between running, biking, swimming. There are days where you have to do strength training, mm -hmm. um, stretching, yeah. yoga, wow. so strengthening your core, um, all these things. Strict diet together. too? Yes. But I'm a pretty healthy eater uh -huh. anyway, uh -huh. so I don't feel like I'm giving up anything. You're not buying the cookies Bye. from the cafe. <laughs> I'm going to save those for some other dapper people. <laughs> For some other great people. Nice. That's cool, man. You're cool. Okay, so uh, <laughs> favorite app on your on desktop or your phone, the one you use the most? Stitcher. What's that? Have you heard of it? No. So it consolidates all of your podcasts. So it's a podcast app. Uh -huh. um, and again, what's wrong with like iTunes or? Uh, nothing's wrong with it. Or whatever comes, the default one. Default one, right. There's a podcast yeah. app. And then I know Spotify also has podcasts. Oh, yeah, they do, yeah. Um, I just like the selection. So you go on Stitcher podcasts. and you just subscribe to other podcasts and mm -hmm. it's all in one place. And it's all there. Um, and I would say, again, most podcast apps work that way. Uh -huh. They remember your favorites. They remember yeah. where you left off. You just like the UI better, mm -hmm. the way it plays out. Yeah. yeah. Do you I have like it on your desktop too? or No, just, yeah, on, my just phone. on your phone. Yeah. Because yeah. then you get no work done. <laughs> yeah. Got to be productive. All right. Let's see. What advice do you have for the younger generation to get involved in tech? Yes. Um, this is a motto that I follow um, and that I got from a TED Talk. Mm -hmm. Live fast, die hard. <laughs> no, go on. And from the founder of Girls Who Code. There you go. Um, she has a great motto. It's, she says to be brave, not perfect. 
Uh -huh. And so that is something that I tell myself day to day mm -hmm. when I am confronted with my work and things I've never done before. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's okay. Yep. You have the skills that you need to figure it out mm -hmm. and be successful. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I encourage younger women is you may not have the industry experience or all of the technical knowledge, but put yourself out there anyway and trust mm -hmm. that you will get it if whatever skill you're trying to get is important enough to you. Um, and really the hardest part is just putting yourself out there, mm -hmm. right? Being brave yep. to show up and put yourself out there. And then once you do it, everything else will continue to fall into place. Mm -hmm. I know, we were talking about off camera how hard it is. Because people are, some people are just so confident and they'll say something with such confidence. Mm -hmm. And we, we're kind of like, well, I'm t I'm, I won't say 100% unless I know 100%. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just asking questions, like no one's, I feel like no one knows anything. Like you're, everyone's learning. Like, yeah. you know, containers and dockers are so new and people <laughs> are experts in it already. And yeah. it's just like, it's a constant, constant growing, constant yeah. learning. So yeah. no one knows everything. I mean, yeah. there's like two people at Microsoft that know everything. <laughs> Yeah, and I yeah. think there's also a great degree of vulnerability mm -hmm. that goes with saying that, right, I don't know everything, but I'm willing to learn mm -hmm. or I'm willing to try something different. Mm -hmm. And that that can be hard. Yeah. Um, but I feel like at Microsoft, we have a culture that embraces vulnerability and supports people that are willing to be vulnerable because yeah. we see that you need to have that in order to be brave mm -hmm. and to learn and mm -hmm. to ultimately be successful. Love it. Kelly, you're one of my favorites. Don't tell the other girls. You're the best. <laughs> Thank you. All you're right. awesome. Thank, Thank you for you. having me. No problem. I'm so honored to be here. All right. Thank See you. you guys next time. Bye.